Good morning all. New printed circuit boards from JLC PCB. And these are necessary because the supercomputer is running a bit dim. Right, let's take a look inside the uh, box. This is a new blue box that JLC PCB are using now. And uh, inside I've got all oh, free gift. And that is interesting. That looks like a mug of possibly beer or possibly Spongebob stuck inside a mug. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about that. But anyway, on to the real deal. And this is the first time that I've done um, a sort of interesting board outline. Well, let's take a look. I had 10 of these made and they are MOSFET PCB. But look at the strange outline cut. It's a sort of round ended rectangle, which I've then cut an angle out of and actually cut into these two pads. Now, can you guess what this is for? Yes, it's for my Muppet 2 board. Now, I seem to remember that I put these on two inch spacings and these on one inch spacings. So the two inch uh, gap from there to there should be correct for that and that should rotate into place. I hope this works. So I was playing with this the other day and something went a bit doolally, I'm not quite sure what. The needle shot up to well over five, hit the end stop and stayed there and nothing I could do with the potentiometer would bring it back. So what happened is this MOSFET burnt out and I thought, oh, I've got to make another one of these. That's a pain because you've got all these little bits of wire, lots of heat shrink, got a solder on a little two pin connector. And then I thought, well, actually it'd be far more sense, wouldn't it, to have a PCB in here with this MOSFET on it, the connector. I also wanted a 10 meg resistor across there because I wanted to ensure that the gate was always discharged to the same potential as the source. And so on here, I've got that R1 and I'll probably go for something like 10 meg or 4 meg 7, whatever I've got really. There's the MOSFET, um, source runs over to this pad, drain runs over to this pad, but through a couple of um, fuse holder clips. Now this caught me out a little bit on the um, design package because this has been shown as F1 and this is F2, but it's not two fuses, it's just the two clips of one fuse. But I couldn't quite work out how to make that one component. But that aside, at that point I abandoned the schematic and just carried on designing the uh, PCB layout without worrying too much about the schematic. It is a ridiculously simple circuit, so it didn't matter too much. Well now the big test is going to be, will this rotate into place? I'm a bit concerned that I didn't quite bring these angles round enough, but let's have a look. So it needs to go in like this and then rotates in. I suppose I should put one side in first. And no, it doesn't quite rotate into place. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is just file a little bit of that away now I didn't worry too much about specifying castellated edges so the routing has just routed into my pad. I don't think it matters too much. Um, yes it is plated through so that half of the pad is connected through to this side of the pad. It's only connected um, through to my connector on one side. I suppose I could have run a track on the other side as well couldn't I? But anyway, uh, that's fine. So I'm just going to file um, these edges on the inside here just a little bit so that that locks into place. So I've got this half round file. Let's just file on that edge a little bit. And similarly here, I think I'm going to have to do this with a bit more precision. And this side. Uh, 
Oh yeah, that's made quite a bit of difference. Okay, let's try that in the board. So the fuse goes to the MOSFET drain. That goes to the input side. Oh, it's still a bit tight. Oh no, oh no, that's gone in. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. It's a bit, it's not quite far quite enough, but a tiny bit more taken off there. And yeah, that fits perfectly. Let's try this again. Yes, that's fine now. It's a little bit stiff, but I don't know, it's slightly odd. You have to get the angle exactly right to get them. I'm going to file that a bit more. So I've now filed it so that it's pretty much a straight line running down into the hole. And similarly there, let's give that a try. And of course, if I make more of these, or if I need to change the design, then I'll certainly change the board outline. Yeah, that fits fine in there now. Now I've ordered some of these fuse clips, but they haven't come in yet. So what I'm gonna do temporarily is just put a solder, a very thin piece of wire in there. Got the MOSFETs, the resistor's not essential, and I've got the headers. So let's make one of these boards up. Now, the other thing I'm going to do as a concession to those people who are young, and can hear the 15 kilohertz um, rattle of this thing, I've come up with an idea. It occurred to me that the rattle here must be mechanical. It must be these windings rattling against the ferrite. It must be acting a bit like a loudspeaker. Something moves, because if nothing's moving, then you won't hear those oscillations. I doubt it's coming from the meter. So today I'm just going to put this elastic band around the ferrite. I'll probably have to double it up to get it tight. And if you could let me know whether that cuts down the level of 15 kilohertz noise, that would be great. In fact, let's do that first. I mean, yes, it's a fairly crude solution to the problem, but if it works, then that will be fine. Let's get it nice and tight on there. So it acts a bit like a damper and absorbs the mechanical movement of the coil on the ferrite. Yeah, I hope this works. That'll be a nice, simple fix if it does. Okay, there it is. I'll put that back on the board. Right, got a MOSFET, got a three pin header, which I've pulled the middle pin out of so that it's a two pin header because the middle pin of this is not used. Now this MOSFET, I'm just wondering actually whether the holes here are big enough that this will sit flat on the board. Yes, they are. That's interesting. Never really sat a MOSFET completely flat on a board before, but I suppose there's no issue with that. Okay, I'll solder that in, get the header in, and then I've got some wire here, which I can pull a strand out of to use as my fuse and we'll see if it works. Right, let's solder these three pins in. One. Is this getting hot? Well, it's 350 degrees, so it should be hot enough. But I'm poking the solder on the back of the component leg, not really on the hot side. But uh, yeah, well, that's in. Let's get the... Actually, I need to clip that off first. Right, clip these legs off. Why are they clipping? My clippers are alright. They're not clipping. What's going on? Oh, it just needed a lot more force than I was giving it. Goodness me, that does need a lot of force. Are these not copper or something? Maybe they're steel legs and they're quite thick. I'm just needing a lot of force. Interesting. Right, that, because I've put the high profile component in before the low one, I've brought out a bit of blue tack so I can just stick that down temporarily while I solder it. And then I'm just going to strip back, oh I'll just cut that off I think, 
that appears to have been soldered uh, how about there is just enough to get me a strand of wire which I'll use as a fuse in place of the fuse holders now it's going to fill these uh, rather nice holes up these holes are slotted so when I come to fit the fuse holder I will have to suck the solder out of there of course I have no way of knowing what the rating of my fuse is but uh, yeah we'll find out I guess okay time to check it out see if it works now as I remember it the yellow goes on to the gate of the MOSFET which is like that and the orange goes to source so that should be the right way around let's screw that in clamp it down it is going to actually be using the underside of the pad because I think this is just a plastic down onto metal uh, connection so it is relying on the through plated holes for the current path yes I really should have done a track on the underside never mind right let's power this thing up so first things first power up the power bank and power up the DC so that switched on the ooh. <laughs> really got problems with this pot I'm suspecting moisture but uh, yeah so that's um, when the green is off we've got 0% pulse width modulation well that should work so let's get some power onto here connect the output to the super caps I'll bring my camera back up okay capacitor positive goes to pos output cap negative neg output now we won't need to do any boost so I'm not going to connect up the boost MOSFET because I'm only taking this to 5.4 volts I've got 12 volts coming in so it's all buck let's plug in the 12 volts make sure that hangs together and now start turning this up and see if I get some current yeah two amps nice now the supercomputer LEDs should be getting brighter because that capacitor should be charging up just leave that for a little while I hope I haven't underspecced my fuse it seems to be able to hold two amps and this pot can get quite jittery so it probably needs to do a bit more than two amps yeah that seems to be holding quite well oh yes and how is the 15 kilohertz please let me know in the comments whether the elastic bands actually work okay I'll um, carry on taking that up all the way I think until I see the red lights on the protection circuits on the super cap I'll keep nudging the current up to make sure that I get the voltage up on here best I can but yes I like my new MOSFET printed circuit board and I will fit that 10 meg resistor I'm not sure I've even got any actually so I might have to buy some now while this is charging I wanted to mention um, something else I was thinking I was thinking perhaps a MOSFET PCB here with actually the driver circuit on the same board it would make sense and then the other thing I think I was discussing the other day is it would be very useful to know at a glance what the PWM percentage is for each MOSFET so I was wondering whether I could make a slightly larger MOSFET board and actually put an OLED on it one of those little uh, 128 by 32 OLEDs the little long thin ones have an I squared C feed coming from the Arduino It'd be relatively easily easy to calculate the OLED um, the, the PWM percentage and transmit it to the OLED continuously that'd be quite fun wouldn't it be able to see on an OLED a percentage figure for the because it's not so easy to tell from this you can see that it's uh, pulse width modulating there is some green and there is some red but it's very hard to tell quite how much of each let's get that current back up to two amps yeah so those might be future innovations and I've just changed the lighting in here I've turned off the under shelf lights all the lights that are directly above here and I put on the ceiling lights so it's all a bit dimmer so that we should be able to see the uh, LEDs come on on the protection circuits on this super cap 
when I've pumped enough charge into it. Oh, those lights are coming on. Yeah, I was just going to say something about this, but I'm just going to back the current off a bit since we're in protection mode. I'll take it down below one amp. Yes, I didn't worry about ticking the little box for castellated holes on this. Now, I'm not entirely sure what ticking that box does, but clearly they've been able to create a through plated hole that probably got done before the final outline route. I, I'm not sure whether that would have been drilled. Yes, it must have been drilled. Then the through plating was done. That has to come after the drilling, I suppose. And then the final route took place. And of course, that slightly disturbs these edges. But for this application, it doesn't really matter. So I was able to not worry too much about specifying castellated holes. These are effectively castellated, but it doesn't really matter that they did the final outline cut and it, it has slightly disturbed the copper. I'll try and get in a bit closer actually. Yes, on this one you can see a little sort of swarf edge where the routing bit has ripped the copper, but I mean, I can break that off. Actually, I could probably do that with my finger now. Just break that off relatively easily. And it doesn't bother me because this hole is so large. I'm just wondering if the castellated holes option is only really needed if you're doing sort of um, 100 mils or tenth of an inch spacings, lots of castellated holes for data. But yeah, I think that's okay. So big thanks to JLC PCB for making my nice MOSFET PCB. Now I don't have to make up these rather fiddly MOSFETs on wires with fork terminals. That's a much better solution. Cheerio. Bonus footage and a sneaky insight into the workings of the supercomputer. Yes, it's just LEDs soldered together. Well, that's three additional LEDs and there were ten. Oh, <laughs> Oh, lovely odd number. It's now a 13-bit supercomputer. Let's take a look at it. Looks pretty good to me. Cheerio.